Hello and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story number 23. Today's video is exciting for me because the rock for today was suggested by a first grade class watching all of my videos and they looked at the table and they saw one actually behind the table that they wanted me to tell about next. So that's what I'm going to do. The rock for today is this one right here. This is a beautiful sample, a very special sample. Let me bring it a little bit closer. This sample, there you can see it. It has a beautiful aqua green color to it. Very shiny. You can maybe even recognize it. it has some kind of sheets in it. I can show you one of those a little bit bigger, better. It's very flaky. The sheets come right off of my finger and that, ooh very greasy. Those sheets of this mineral are falling apart and it makes like a greasy feel on my fingers. This mineral is known for its softness and its greasy feel. In fact, this is the softest mineral of all. This mineral is called talc. Talc. Now, talc is an interesting mineral because it is another water rock. Do you remember talking about serpentine or other water rock? Well, talc can form in a similar environment. It doesn't have as much water as serpentine does, but it still has some. And I actually collected this in the state of Vermont in a talc mine. I got permission to go into the mine and speak with the geologists and they gave me this as a gift when I left. And now I can share this gift with all of you. And talc is mined because, again, it's made out of these little sheets. There's a little tiny example of one of those little sheets right there. And at that greasy, greasy feel, very, very soft feel. In talc, those sheets barely stick together. I've got another mineral that looks like sheets that I want to show you too. And it's this one sitting right next to the talc. This one is called mica. Mica. Some of you might have heard of mica. Some of you might have collected some mica. This is a really huge example of mica. I'm going to bring it closer so we can see it together. I collected this in New Hampshire at a place called a pegmatite. I'll tell you about a pegmatite another day. But this is a huge crystal of mica, as big as my hand. And I said that this is also made of sheets. In fact, I think I can pull out there. There's a tiny little sheet of mica. In fact, this kind of mica, the sheets I can see right through. Hello, I can see you. This kind of mica is called muscovite. Muscovite. You can see right through muscovite like a clear window. But the sheets in muscovite are more strongly bound together. Muscovite is much harder than talc. I'm not getting a greasy feeling at all. This is a much stronger sheet. Talc just seems to the sheets just fall right apart. I wonder why these sheets are so loosely bound together and greasy, whereas these sheets in mica are much more strongly bound together. I can answer that by showing you what talc and mica are made of inside. If we look inside talc or inside mica with the most powerful microscopes we could possibly imagine, it turns out that all minerals are made of a special structure made out of atoms. Atoms are like little round balls. Little round balls. And every atom is a different element, like oxygen or silicon or aluminum or iron. And these little round balls, these atoms, are the building blocks that make up the microscopic teeny tiny structure inside every mineral. I've got a model here. 
that I can show you to get a sense of this. You might even be able to see this right here shows one of those sheety layers. This is a model of mica, muscovite, just like this. And there's that sheet. That thin sheet like that is right there. Remember, this is blown up to huge magnification. These are actually so small. And what's interesting, this sheet, this layery sheet is made out of white cages and black cages. And inside every white cage and every black cage is a little atom. Small atoms fit in the white cages. Medium-sized atoms fit in the black cages. Silicon fits here and iron or aluminum might fit there. And then in the middle between the two sheets, this is where it gets interesting. In mica, this stuff, where the sheets are glued together very strongly, they're bound together by a strong glue made up of great big atoms that can fit right in between those sheets. Those great big atoms can fit in between those sheets and those atoms are like a strong glue holding the sheets together and something called an ionic bond. Look at the science. Look at the structure of these minerals in the ionic bond holding the sheets together in our muscovite mica. But in talc, Talc is exactly the same as mica, except it's missing one thing. No strong ionic bond. The atom that bonds together muscovite mica is potassium. Muscovite mica is loaded with potassium. You might have heard of potassium. It's an important nutrient. In fact, we need it in our bodies too. Bananas have a lot of potassium if you don't want to eat muscovite. Muscovite has potassium that glues the sheets together. Talc is missing the potassium. So those two sheets, this one here and this one here, they're barely held together by anything. And that's what makes it greasy. Slip, slide, slip, slide. The sheets rub right by each other and gives you that greasy feel. It's fun for scientists to think about the properties of minerals and ask, why is this soft and greasy? Why do these sheets seem to hold together more strongly? It's fun for scientists to think about the structures, the internal microscopic structures that all minerals have, and to figure out why they have the properties that they do. We did a little chemistry today, a little geochemistry. I hope you like this video about mica and talc the softest mineral of all. Bye-bye.